today we're going to cover the 97 F350 that was nicknamed the cowboy truck. Why we're going to do that is because we haven't really showed a lot of detail on this truck. We have snippets and videos and pictures and clips and all that BS. We even took it on a road trip to Lone Star Throwdown this year in Texas and brought home one of these, top 100 out of 2,000. But this video isn't just about that. This video is to kind of give you a backstory, a history lesson, uh, to go over the parts and pieces that we put into this truck, why we did it. The history lesson is going to start off with, we just kind of want a truck for camping and off-road use. I found a rusty, crusty single wheel truck. It wasn't even a dually. We then thought, well, what's cooler than like an off-road truck, but yet to have a flatbed for going up camping in the woods. And that just kind of took off. Um, found this truck down Eugene, really rough, was not pretty. Sourced out parts and pieces, scabbed here and there. Along the way, we learned a lot about what's available, what's not available, what can we use, what can we, uh, can't we can use. Kind of cool. The other thing is, this truck's, it, it wasn't intended to be a show truck. We didn't go after that market. We're not looking for like something we take to all these shows and we're trying to win trophies. That's the last thing we wanted. We just kind of wanted this off-road vehicle that was functional, could put dirt bikes on the back, the kids could haul, hop in it, and we could take it on a rip and have a good time. It wasn't anything more than that. We actually weren't even gonna paint it. I was just gonna leave it with the dingy white that it had, and the moss was, uh, we blew the moss off it, and they said, man, yeah, we probably gotta paint it. Engine, powertrain, brakes, wheels, I mean, everything is really detailed in this truck. There's a lot of stuff people don't know about. Everything from when it, before it went to paint, before we did anything else with interior, the doors got taken off the truck, stripped down. We even sound deadened the inside of the door, not where the door panel goes on, but literally the cavity inside the door. So when you shut it, it sounds like a new truck. It's kind of our goal was, can you take an OBS, give it the power, give it the ride, give it the you know quiet and all the luxury and stuff like that of kind of a modern day truck, but with an OBS spin and still keep that 97 OBS kind of style. We'll give you some pictures, we'll kind of go over what we did, why we did it, how we did it, um, kind of some details. I'm going to miss a lot of stuff. Uh, this project took us three years and why it took us three years because we were kind of still building OBS solutions. There was a lot of uh, detail that went into it that honestly dollar wise we kind of had to kind of wait and so we did stuff in steps. We also like did stuff in steps and then we kind of went backwards and did stuff in another step and then moved on. Uh, yeah, so. I'll get you some details. I'll miss a lot of stuff, so bear with me. Uh, let's do this together. So the first step we did is uh, we had to source out some axles because if you, I don't know if you know this, but in these years of trucks, they didn't sell a true dually four wheel drive truck. You had to find conversion parts or this or that. We were able to find a donor truck, cabin chassis, or actually not a cabin chassis, it was just a, a wrecked truck, but the, the frame was still straight. The axles were in good shape. So I put them in, it was a Dana 60 with the Ford factory uh, hubs, or dually hubs, and then obviously the rear was a, a Sterling 10.25, and it was a true dually axle. So we cleaned them up, we went re-bearing them, and we threw those underneath it, and then at that point, obviously while we're doing that, it was suspension stuff. We love the Sky Super Duty Shackle Reversal. I, I'm a big fan of that. At that point, we weren't making our own springs yet. We were actually using RevTex, and we, I, I'm a big fan of theirs. I love how ride, uh, soft they ride. So we did, it was about four, uh, four inch springs, two inch shackles. We're about six inches of lift on this truck. That has changed obviously. And so of the axles, I'm gonna touch on this. We, the axles that we had in it were great. It wasn't like we were against using those axles, but I found, I just happened to find some 04 uh, Super Duty axles that I'm like, dude, I gotta have this. It was a Dana 80 in the rear. It had obviously disc brakes. They were big brakes. And then, um, and obviously the front was a newer 60. So it doesn't have those axles on it anymore. Um, it's got the newer axles, all cross drill rotors, the bigger brakes, obviously a Dana 80, like I said, in the rear. Uh, that part was, that was recent. Uh, back to the step before we put the axles and before we did the suspension, we actually, uh, it all down it was just basically the chassis we blew it all apart cleaned the frame painted the frame went over everything all the details uh, put it together just basically had uh, about six inches of lift on this truck with some and I found some cheap 
cheap wheels off of Craigslist and dually wheels. Uh, if you look back in for, uh, earlier posts, they were black fuels or something, I can't remember. And so I had some wheels on it, tires on it, and it was sitting where we thought we wanted it, about, like I said, six inches of lift. And we just drive it every once in a while while we're in that state. We stopped there. That was it. No bed on it. It was just blank. And then uh, we waited. And then it was the next stage. The next stage was the bed. So we're going to take off and we'll go on a tangent about the bed next and where that came from. The next part was this bed. Uh, I, I kind of want a flat. I want a flat bed. I went and looked at different brands, different models of flat beds, skirted, non-skirted. I I kind of realized that it wasn't anything I wanted. All the stuff, not that it was terrible, but there's a lot of things that I wasn't happy with with the aftermarket beds. So I drew this bed up on a napkin at a business seminar that I was supposed to be paying attention to with my wife. Um, I drew it up and we have a company we work with. Uh, it's all formed on the sides. We can't do that here obviously. So I had them form and, and fab this bed up for us to what our specs were. Working with them, we kind of got over some hurdles that flatbeds have. Like this bed just bolts to the frame. You don't have to build brackets. There's no special um, fasteners. You don't weld it to the frame. It literally bolts to the factory holes in the frame where the bed used to be. The other thing is, there's this bed's free floating meaning the B&W hitch and the receiver underneath are all on the frame, not attached to the bed. So when you're pulling with this truck, it's not pulling on the bed itself, it's pulling on the actual receiver bolted to the frame and so, so forth with the, the fifth wheel or the gooseneck. And I wanted that because I see flatbeds that have it all you know, welded to the back of it and I'm always looking at it like, well, you're pulling on the back of the, the flatbed and I know they work and that's fine, but I. I didn't want that. I wanted the bed to be like a pickup box where it's just on the bed or on the frame, just floating there. The other thing I noticed is I love this. I love having compartments, but I kind of want to be concealed so you can't see them. I love to keep the factory body lines, but with a little bit of flare or a little bit of uh, I don't know. So it follows the the original lines of the truck. The uh, on this truck, I thought it was kind of cool to put the boxes inside so you can't really see them, and then. I love, I've seen a couple dualies where they have a spare tire mount on the back or they have a headache rack. I'm not a headache rack guy, so I kind of like the welder body style flatbeds and I kind of like that look. So that's what we did here. We kind of incorporated a spare tire holder for a 35, 37, and then obviously no headache rack. But we did incorporate some diamond plate on there that's removable if it gets messed up. You can get it repowder coated and put it back on. Everything's kind of meant to be serviced. After that, uh, the bed part was done. We fit it on there, kind of got the suspension set where we need to be after that because how much it weighed. And then we moved on to the powertrain. We wanted to kind of see what we can do with the engine and what's available and what we can do to make a 7.3 look good under the hood. The powertrain. A lot of people ask about what we're running for injectors and turbo and this and that. There's a lot of detail here. Uh, I'm going to first go over the, the look of this engine bay and why it looks the way it does and then I go into detail on on the fuel system and injectors and turbo and stuff like that. The first thing is uh, seven threes in my opinion I've always thought they look kind of derpy you got hoses and wires going everywhere I've never thought they look really sexy looking um, I know there's a lot of seven threes out there that do I'm not bagging on that but this was our take on it so when it came to this engine this engine obviously I'm going to time out and go backwards this engine is was Taken out of the engine, or out, was taken out of the truck, sent to our machinist, completely blown apart, and gone through. Uh, everything from reworking the valve train to head studs to a girdle system. Uh, nothing. I, I always tell people like we try to make sure we didn't leave any stone unturned. It wasn't a dollar thing. It was what is the right way to do this. Obviously, we're going to use a T4 system from Dan Howard of Obsession Diesel. We're obviously going to use a big turbo. Which one are we going to use? We stuck with a 369 SXE. What injectors? We did 238 over 100s. Um, we fire ringed it. A lot of people are like, oh, you don't have to fire ring a 7.3. I don't give, I don't care. I'm going to fire ring it and I'm going to head stud it. Like I said, I don't think we left anything, you know, we didn't leave anything off the table. We also put headers on it. It's got big flange stainless steel headers on it. Everything's Cerakoted on the exhaust side. The engine bay, like I was going to tell you about, the why it looks the way it does. I, I wanted to eliminate stuff and move things out of the way. 
Um, everything from our icebox intercooler and radiator, I had them make that. That was our first run. That wasn't something, it wasn't like a market we were going after. I wasn't like, hey, let's make intercoolers to sell. I just want an intercooler for myself, and I wanted a radiator to match that all looked Sano. At that point, we also came up with our intercooler bracket system that bolts to the core support, which I was pretty kick-ass. But if you look at the engine bay, you'll see there's some things missing. First thing, our glow plug relay is not sitting down in the valley. Our wiring harness in the valley is also cleaned up and moved. Uh, the big one for me was the heater hose that comes out of the water pump and goes over the alternator. We relocated that. We did some special finagling. You'll also notice it's got hydro boost. It doesn't have a vacuum pump anymore. It runs a super duty electron or electric vacuum pump. The belt routing is totally different when it comes to that. A lot of detail in the engine bay to make it look like uh, it came off the showroom floor that way or that it wasn't just thrown together. Everything down to even making an SMB airbox work with a T4 setup, custom piping for that, right down to the custom lid, says OBS Solutions. I know I'm missing some things. I know there's a lot of stuff that people are going to ask about. We were shooting for like the five to 600 reliable horsepower range. I know that's a goal that people say, oh, it's super achievable, but I want reliable that my wife can drive it and I don't have to worry about punching a window through the, the block. I mean, Brian Crowler rods, d lit pistons, it, it, there's just a list. And so I, I know I'm forgetting a lot of shit here, so bear with me. Um, and on the, on the transmission, we kind of like, hey, E4Ds are great and all that if you put money into them. But after talking to our transmission builder here locally, he's like, hey, let's do a 4 or 100 conversion. Let's let's actually give it some meat. So we did that. So it's got a beefy 4 or 100, totally tore down, put back together, all that. Custom lines from that all the way to the 6 liter tranny cooler. And I'm trying to remember, is there anything else? Uh, there is. There's tons of stuff. So I'll try to... We'll try to put it in the, if there's any little tidbits that I'm missing, we'll try to put it in the bio or the, whatever Kenny does for the description on this. But we're gonna move on to interior next. That way you can get this video wrapped up. So the interior. There's a lot here too. I'm gonna miss stuff as well. But the first thing people ask is what radio is in that? It's a floating radio den, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't, I have the part number right here with the owner's band. It's a Pioneer. There's the part numbers of all the different ones it could be. It's the top one, I believe. Anyway, it was kind of a different take on uh, that single den radio. So it's still a single den. We didn't have to cut the dash for a double den, but it gives it that double den look. I like that model because I, I looked at a bunch of other ones. I like that one because it's rigid and you can mount it in different areas and locations. I thought that was kind of cool. Interior wise, we gutted the interior before it went to paint. Um, it went to paint, came back, and then we blew all the little parts and pieces uh, that we could apart. Everything, like I said, the inner, the doors inside on inside this panel is all dynamite and soundproofed on all the doors on inside the cab obviously on this on you know before the carpet goes in we soundproofed all that as well we even did before the headliner went in we did that as well um what else all all the door i'm a i'm a fan of my my door buttons to nice and smooth so we obviously blow those apart we re clean them out replace parts and pieces if we have to window motors window linkage so rears are all new fronts are all new uh, the front's got brand new regulators with motor. We can't get the rear regulators anymore new, but it got new motors and then we cleaned everything, sandblasted everything, put it back together. If we couldn't find it new, we just cleaned it, sandblasted it, repainted it so it wouldn't rust or anything like that and put them back in. Uh, we even vacuumed out the doors and got all the, the crap out of the bottom of the channels to make sure. Obviously weather stripping is all brand new. Door panels, Oscar does an amazing job. He will fine tune a door panel. So all the door panels got blown apart. I have a stash of door panels, don't tell anyone. Upstairs, so we rifled through the best ones we had, picked parts and pieces out of them. We took a, uh, a single cab truck door panel and converted it to a crew cab door panel just because it was better shape. It wasn't faded up top here like you see a lot of them do. And we swapped out this whole area for a crew cab, put that on. 
Everything's LED lighting through this truck, except for the third brake light, of course. But we did LED lighting through the dash, through all the, obviously the lights. Uh, you can check that out. I love this part of the truck. The steering wheel. The steer, steering wheel is done by a guy named Steering Wheel Art on Instagram. He does Ferraris, Lamborghinis, all this high-end Porsche stuff, all these exotic cars. He'll do normal cars and trucks as well. Reached out to him because I wanted it to feel like my new Super Duty. I wanted the steering wheel to have that new cushy but not too cushy feel. I told him, hey, here's what I wanted. I wanted the stitching to be gray, nothing over the top, no carbon fiber. I want it to be somewhat uh, subtle, but yet when you drive it, it feels kick ass. The seats, here's a big one. Uh, when this truck came to us, the seats were disgusting. In fact, my wife sat in the passenger seat and she thought someone died in it, it was that bad. So instead of reupholstering the factory seats, which I love the factory seats, but I was like, let's just try, everyone's kind of converting Super Duty seats into these trucks and I felt like they were fitting, sitting too tall, especially for a short guy like me. So we reinvented the wheel when it came to bracket system to bolt the, these are 05 seats. I like that seat the best. No airbags in them. You have heat. They have power functions. They also have the back that lays down. You have a lot of options there. So we took the seats, and the seats were, I found them were in great shape. So we had a couple panels fixed. People think these seats are all reworked. They're not. We had some panels fixed, some leather fixed on some spots, and then the headrests have our, our logo in them. That's it. It wasn't like we took and spent $4,000 on these seats. They're actually OG seats, repaneled in some spots, cleaned up. And then, like I said, with our logo on it. Uh, what else? Everything else. Oh, this truck was disgusting, like I've said before. So the dash before uh, it came back from paint, we pulled the dash out of this truck, the heater case out of the truck. We cleaned everything behind it and took the soundproof and went all the way up to the glass. We felt like that was the right thing to do. It also let us go through the heater and AC condenser or AC evaporator, clean those up as well. Um, I didn't want to work on this truck ever again underneath it and find dirt and grime. That would piss me off for as far as we've gone. So we pulled the dash, we put it on a bench, we, we pulled all the plastic off of it and went through everything and cleaned it with a scrub brush and simple green. All the vents are all cleaned out, everything. That being said, all the switches in this truck is, if we couldn't find it from Ford, I try to source uh, after, or uh, I try to find motorcraft stuff that was discontinued from other vendors. Headlight switch, multifunction switch, fuel selector switch is all motorcraft. Um, everything electronically we tried, it still has the factory injector driver module. That is still OG. Other than that, everything else is brand new. Oh, I forgot to tell you, this truck was a California truck. I didn't let people know about that, and we had to repin it for federal because it's better for running tunes. So that was a big hurdle too. More time consuming than everything. Interior, I think I've kicked that off. What else, Kenny? Oh, let's talk about wheels and the axle. I'll give you a, pre, a little like, glimpse of the wheels and why we did what we did on that one as well. Let's talk about wheels, axles, tires, all that stuff. And I, I say axles because that was a big part of why we went to a JTX wheel. The axles are 99 to 04. They're a little bit wider in the front, wider in the rear as well. But I wanted the rear axle uh, how do I say that? The stance of the truck, I wanted the front to match the rear. So when it came to the wheels, I talked to JTX for a set of dually wheels for this truck. There are 22 on a 37. We're around eight inches of lift, but I wanted this offset to look like the rear. So they actually made and machined us a custom adapter to get us a little bit more offset. To, so the, the front, when you look down this truck, it sticks out as much as the rear, so it's all symmetrical. You don't have the front tucked in and the rear sticking out past the, the flare of the, uh, the bed. Other than that, you can see it's cross-drilled rotors, obviously an awesome looking wheel. These guys kill it. After that, I think we're about wrapped up. I get a little tidbits and we'll kind of follow, follow up on the next one. Obviously we installed our double plate tow mirror setup on this truck. It's like kind of the flagship, the staple, if you will, for OBS Solutions, which started this company. You can see here, all welded in. I like the satin black behind it, so the base kind of blends in. We're using a Boost Auto Mirror, Boost Automotive Mirror. I, I dig their stuff, assembled here in the United States. This is not their lens, though. We use Clears. It's a company out of New York, I believe, and you can get uh, all kinds of uh, mirror accessories. This is just the lens, so you have to pull it apart, re-epoxy it. 
things that are that I don't that people don't understand or like they don't see is like simple stuff like the wiper transmissions. They're all new. You can get those new, by the way. We replaced all that. The wiring harness that goes from obviously the entire run of the frame. We actually pulled that out, repolyloomed it, cleaned it all up. Fuel lines, brake lines, all new. The wiring harness inside the engine bay. Pulled that out as well. There's actually pictures somewhere of me and Oscar cleaning it with a scrub brush. Uh, shrub brush. It's little things like that that we don't talk about. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of other things that I'm missing, uh, and so we'll probably have some more uh, details on this post, if you will. So. So in closing, uh, what's the future of this truck? Uh, I don't know, to be honest with you. We're gonna use it. We kind of tended to use it. We've started towing with it a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm the, my own worst enemy. We have several trucks that we don't show everyone that are really mint and they stay in my shop at home. And I'm, I'm really guilty of not using them. And this truck we wanna use. The other thing is, we don't know if we're gonna keep it. Eventually we might sell it, maybe on. We have a lot of projects coming down the pipeline. Um, this one takes up a lot of space and I, although I'm, you never know um, but I just want to thank everyone for following along we were gonna use this truck more and more um, we don't want to saturate the, our content with it so we kind of space it out we also have some other products that we're working on this trucks done but there's still some other R&D stuff we're working on that we will put on this truck um, hopefully we have them at the show as well you may have seen this video one of those items if you caught it uh, anyway, thanks so much uh, for following along. I, I love the comments about this truck, good or bad. It's just we didn't try to build a show truck. We just kind of want to see what we could do with this body style truck that we love so much. That's about it.